Hey everyone, just a really quick note before we actually start this video, I wanted to go ahead and let you know that I have indeed seen the update which was in the helm and the fact that it's got even more goopy and that Callus left us a little message. Uh, that's bad. Requires us to acknowledge that there is a great degree of impending doom. I do, however, have this full video basically done and prepared and I've been working on the script for a while, so... Most of it isn't really changed by this, despite the fact that the helm got goopier. I hope that they'll clean that up next season. I think they will. If they don't, uh, maybe that puts everything I'm about to say in an interesting context. Either way, yeah, uh, it should hopefully be something that is of interest to you guys to listen to, and why I think the helm is evidence that we're going to lose the last city. Anyway... Yeah, just wanted to let you know that before we start the video, because that is an update that happened literally only just a few days ago. So, here it is. Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bifear. So, how many times have you wanted to reach through your phone and slap me for mentioning Battlestar Galactica for, like, the 50th time? Uh, not too many of you, I hope, but it needs to be said that I absolutely love the Ronald D. Moore early 2000s iteration and how it drives home that really gritty nature of an apocalyptic situation. For those of you that have watched the show, this is not going to be a huge surprise to you, but I think that with the latest season, we've basically confirmed that the last city is going to be destroyed and that we are going to be BSGing it. It might come as less of a shock to some of you than others, but there's a lot of evidence for the fact that the last city is going to be destroyed. And for me, the straw that really broke the metaphorical camel's back was the fact that the helm, which has always looked like the command bridge of a starship, has at last taken off and, well, it's in space now. It is a spacecraft. And it's been shown that it can be completely mobile throughout the system. It has its own LNLS drives. It can go where it needs to go. So let's talk about that mountain of evidence that this is going to be our new home soon, and the evidence that the last city is going to be destroyed, and let's break all of that down for you. But first, a word from our sponsors at HelloFresh. You all probably know HelloFresh well by this point. Using their pre-portioned fresh food meal kits, you can make cooking absolutely effortless. I've talked many a time about how convenient they are, and about how they can help you accomplish your food goals. You want something that's a lower calorie option to eat? You want to wow your family with a special meal? You want to just try something new? You can accomplish any and all of these things with HelloFresh's nutritious and easy meals. Even if you have interesting dietary requirements like being vegetarian or pescatarian, you can absolutely still get a wholesome, fit meal and stick to those goals of yours. What's more, they're pre-portioned, which means less food waste and less time spent on prep. That's better for the planet and better for you. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGBIFORG16 for 16 meals across 7 boxes plus 3 surprise gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count the purchases. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. So the key thing to understand about the idea that we're going to lose the last city to the darkness is that Bungie has been hinting to it in a lot of different ways over the last few years, and it really has been years worth of hints. From visions of ghosts that were lost in the Vault of Glass, to hints that we got from Osiris wandering the corridors of time, even to the idea that the city has been destroyed or at very least ravaged in other timelines, we know the fact of our destruction at home is not only possible, but it has happened in other instances. Not all factors in our timeline have to match the others, but it would be fair to say that if we want to understand the evidence of the last city potentially falling in the future, we can't ignore what we know from those other timelines. Having said that, I'm bound to have missed bits and pieces of lore here and there, so if you have your own thoughts on this, and if you have any kind of moment where you think, hey, he's missed this key bit of story where he could potentially see the last city falling for another reason, yeah, you know, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments section. Especially if it's something that actually countermands the idea that we would be losing the last city. I'd be really interested to see all of that too. So, let's talk about the oldest piece of evidence for the last city's destruction. This comes from all the way back in Destiny 1, and in particular from the Vault of Glass. This is one of the Ghost Fragment Grimoire cards that you can find on a dead ghost within the Vault of Glass. This grimoire card tells us about a potential future that was witnessed deep in space 
and it reads as follows. A Starfield. The stars swing slowly across the ghost's field of view. Just darkness and the blazing fury of distant suns as the ghost tumbles through empty space. Hours of this before, with a wash of power, a huge convoy of ships drops into reality from warp. A convoy of guardian craft, hundreds strong, ships of all sizes and shapes can be seen, from venerable craft that have been salvaged from the Golden Age through to city designs to vessels that have yet to emerge from the shipwright's hangars. The ships are battle-scarred, many are barely spaceworthy. As warp drives wind down, several seem to lose power and begin to drift. Some of the largest craft bear imagery familiar to frequent visitors of the tower. Dead orbit symbols, the simple icon of the vanguard, the new monarchy and future war cult as well, though fewer examples can be seen. Others bear symbols never seen in the tower to date. Every single ship from the largest cruiser to the smallest personal craft carries shards of stone, remnants of the city and the tower, Banners, too, tattered and worn from emptying and leaving warp. The fleet is only visible for a few breaths, less than a minute. Then, with a massive flash of light, the fleet jumps on. The craft that have lost power are left behind, spinning and whirling away from the etheric wake of their powered fellows. The ghost spins on, and soon, only stars fill its field of view until the fragment ends. So this would indeed seem troubling, a flotilla of ships with various insignia related to the tower and its occupants charting a course across the void of space, seemingly on a diaspora away from Sol, carrying the remnants of the tower and the last city with them. Who knows if that will come to pass, but there's more evidence than just simply the different timelines that appear to have been explored in the Vault of Glass. Back before he was possessed by the Witch Queen, Osiris also saw a fragment of the future. This was also done thanks to the technology and predictions of the Vex, but it was seen through the simulations of the Infinite Forest on Mercury before it disappeared into the clutches of the Witness and the Black Fleet. Take a listen to this. Osiris stood before a gate into the Infinite Forest. Two years ago, news had reached him that one of his oldest friends was dead. Saint had been missing for ages, but the Warlock had always assumed the Titan would turn up someday. He was wrong. He realized he was staring through a dormant gate frame and keyed a cubicle device that hung at his belt to pry the doorway open. He couldn't save Saint from the Vex, but every day, he stood vigil in the Infinite Forest to monitor simulations of the future based on their activity. Beyond the gate, a shimmering sea of data beckoned him. He stepped through, into the white moor of an Infinite Forest debug chamber. Start it up, Sagira, he said. Sure you don't want to take a break today? she asked, unfolding above him like a crown. The Vex won't. She considered it a moment. Then the forest shimmered around them, and the white moor dimmed to half-darkness. Then, pitch black. The floor fell away, and Osiris's light held him aloft, sheathed him in a thin veneer of armor. Nothing moved. The warlock frowned, lit a solar spark and held it up. It illuminated nothing around him. Did something go wrong with this sequence? I just triple-checked. No, she replied. This is it. This is the simulation. He keyed his radio. Go ahead, Osiris, Ikora said. What's happening out there, he replied. Take your pick. We're at war on the moon again. The Vex attacked. And? We retaliated. The Undying Mind is dead. How? A plan and mutual friends. Our mutual friends just changed all projected futures in the Infinite Forest. You don't sound happy about that. I'll be in touch. He cut the transmission. Where are we? He asked Sagira. Where we always are, 
simulated mercury. He couldn't even see stars. How far does this void reach? All the way to the Traveler, for all I know. Take us there. Osiris knew the simulation moved around him, but the typical shimmer of the forest was gone. There was nothing to see. We're here, she confirmed, as he found gravelly purchase under his boots. He had never heard her sound so unsure of herself. It was brighter here at the top of a windswept dune, but barely. He couldn't see the sun in the purple twilight that hung above him. The breeze roared in his ears. The sphere of the Traveler was gone. In its place, an obsidian monolith, at least twice the size, dominated the sky. In the last city's place was a swirling dust storm, tinged purple by the dying light. When does this happen? The forest predictions give a window of two to three decades, depending on a multitude of variables, with a not insignificant chance for acceleration based on specific elements. What elements? Actions of mutual friends. Kill the simulation. Get me to Mercury. For context, the Undying Mind died at our hands, and the friends in particular that Osiris and Ikora, the mutual friends, they are mentioning is, well, us. We're the ones that did this. We destroyed the Undying Mind, and for whatever reason, that led to all Vex futures being calculated in such a way that the Witness seems to have won. That dark future that would happen in two to three decades, with the lots of potential for acceleration, it's all been caused by us. Rather scary. And the Vex here have seen this simulation effectively blot out all potential futures, as Osiris put it. This is every simulated future. This is what happens now. So the Undying Mind's destruction inevitably led the Vex to calculate this, and it's not the only place where such a future has at very least been prophesized, if not calculated. Take a look at the Vow of the Disciple Raid, for example, inside Rourke's Pyramid Ship, where we can see the Prophecy Wall, which is located between Encounters 2 and 3. This has a prophecy laid within, which implies that the Pyramid Fleet will arrive at Earth and stop the Guardian, and that the Witness would commune with the Traveler and drink the light. So this idea of a pyramid hanging over the last city, and thus bringing forth its potential destruction, is not at all out of the question. The Darkness itself has stated that this is part of its action. The other thing to remember is that the city has fallen before, in a different timeline to the forces of the Darkness. The Dark Future law book from Beyond Light recounts Elsie Bray, the Exo Stranger's experience of what happened in the other timeline that she failed to save. It may be that this is an experience she's seen repeat hundreds, dozens, or maybe thousands of times. We're unsure of the actual number, but it seems clear that it's not happened only once. It's worth remembering that the experience here in this book is fundamentally different from the one that we are having in our timeline, and LC has commented on such a fact. She states as much to us when we do eventually master stasis and unlock all of our different tools in that subclass. Our road has hope. Our timeline has fundamental differences from those in this dark future timeline, but some elements of the future might still come to pass, and there are certain similarities that should not be ignored. In particular, I wanted to highlight one entry, the fifth entry. I wanted to go ahead and share it because it highlights how the last city fell. This is recounted by a rather beaten up Zavala, who in this timeline was there to see the defeat of the last city at the hands of the Darkness' agents, and in the process, he's lost a leg. He tells the story to Elsie, Anna, and Rasputin within the wreckage of the giant Cabal mega weapon. The Almighty, which in this timeline also was destroyed by Rasputin and crashed on our planet. Take a listen. We follow Zavala back to his home, inside the wreckage of the Almighty that had crashed long ago. Do you remember this, Warmind? Our greatest success, Zavala says, 
and gives us a half-smile weighted down by years of reclusiveness and our final victory. Rasputin finds his way over to a console and plugs in. There are files in there I've been trying to decrypt for years. Maybe you'll have better luck, Zavala says. He lights a fire and prepares a kettle. I can't imagine. Eris, Anna says, her voice trailing off in shock. Eris wasn't special. She was corrupted as easily as the rest. She came to me after finding an artifact inside a pyramid on the moon and deceived us all. The bombardment was her masterstroke, proving the darkness destroys all it touches. Just to pause here and add a little context, in this dark future timeline, Eris Morn actually ascended to become what I believe is a true disciple of the Witness, one who was truly directing and commanding all the forces of the Witness. In this future, dark timeline, Eris was even more powerful and in command of Savathun, the Witch Queen, who did not plan to betray the Witness and to take the light. Instead, she decided to remain in the darkness's clutches. Anyway, continuing on. My sister shoots me a knowing and somewhat hopeful glance. What happened that day? It's been impossible to find accurate recounts, Anna said. We were outnumbered. When the Witch Queen found me, she called me the Non-Believer as she tore my leg from its joint and pulled the light from my ghost, discarding me like trash. My Cora had it worse. I looked to Anna, who is hanging on every word, fighting back tears. The urge to console her rushes up from the pit of my stomach, but I repress the sensation. I wasn't meant for that. I looked up to the Traveler, hoping it would be our salvation from this atrocity, but instead, it just left. Abandoned us when we needed it most. I wanted to reach out and grab it, make it stay, make it save us, as we always thought it would. But that was it. Gone. Cabal forces crumbled the rest. Rasputin interrupts. What's that, Red? Anna asks. Did he say what I think he said? I ask, perking up. He says Gaul's plans to ensnare the Traveler and harvest its light. The blueprints, they're all here. He's copying them now. My mind races. Zavala has been sitting on a gold mine. Looks like you might get your chance to capture the Traveler after all, I propose with vigor. We bring it back here, make it fight, and restore the light. You'd need to find it first, Anna says. There's a hesitation in her voice, as if she actually doesn't like this plan. Rasputin chimes in again in Russian. What's he saying? Zavala asks. He can track it. The Traveler, I say. Clovis installed the capability as a failsafe in case it ever tried to run off. Even with Red tracking it, we'd need an army to build Gaul's device, Anna says pessimistically. Anna, this is as good a shot as we're going to get. Did you drag me all this way to give up now? I ask. No. No, you're right. We can figure this out. Zavala smiles faintly while watching us. What do you say, Commander? One last ride for Ikora? Anna knows just what to say. I suppose, Zavala says. If this is the end of the world, we may as well go down swinging. Anna's eyes light up. We'll still need that army. I know someone in command of an army who has a bone to pick with Eris, Zavala says. We need to find Mara Sov. It's worth noting, by the way, that Elsie actually has a few details for you in the Beyond Light quest package if you sit there and actually finish up all the stasis bits. She'll tell you in particular that Eremis was also a part of the forces on the day of the bombardment, the forces of the darkness coming together to destroy the last city. You had the forces of the Cabal there, likely the ones under the command of Callus, as well as the forces of Eris, including the Witch Queen Savathun and her brood, 
And then you had Eramis and her Elixni, the Fallen of the House of Salvation, joining in. This is why they're still a key player within the last city and all of its infrastructure. And this is why it's worth keeping in mind, because ultimately they are potentially going to decide our fate. After all, they were one of the individuals that helped decide it before. So, finally, this leads us to our BSG-type problem. I would say that we're standing firm in the city, and functionally, as far as gameplay is concerned, we absolutely can't lose the last city, and the tower in particular, given that we've got all of our important stuff there, and there's no other place than the city where we can access all that stuff. Right? Except that's not really the case, because in comes Witch Queen with the Enclave, a new social space, a Martian social space that has a ton of room, Ikora, the vaults, our postmaster, and a few other bits and pieces in there already that you'd expect. But then you take a look at the helm and remember that we're looking to escape the last city and become spaceborn at some point if the darkness arrives, and the helm lets us do that, and it also comes with a ton of space, the Postmaster, our vaults, and a bunch of other different amenities that are helpful. Yeah, sure, the seasonal vendors are in there, but I think Bungie has been acquainting us with that space for a long time since the season of The Chosen for a reason. I don't think for a second this is coincidence. I think this is, well, very much planned. The helm has all our key functions, and with the exception of vendors who can be inserted into any reasonable space, we know that we've got room within the different wings of the helm to open up and provide different forces and to accommodate different seasonal vendors. It can be our new equivalent of the tower, just needs the space and the love and care. At this point, I think we'll all need to go ahead and simply look at this. It's impossible for us to sit there and see an expansion named Lightfall and not contemplate the last city falling. If that is going to be our line of reasoning, we then need to understand that we need somewhere else to go and decrypt our items, to deposit our loot, to store our weapons, and to recoup at the end of our battles. And I think that very soon, that new place is going to be the helm. The helm taking off this season was for me the last bit of evidence that I needed in order to think, yeah, we're going to go full BSG. Anyway, that's all from me for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and leave a like. And of course, remember to leave your comments and thoughts down below in the comments section. If you want more videos like this on Destiny Lore, you can hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Baif. Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.